Welcome and make sure you stick around through the entirety of the video. You're going to see how I chip this table and make it look like concrete and then secondly make a cool hourglass regal base. Stay tuned for all the details. So I start here by cross cutting the slabs and ripping them down to size. These slabs happen to be a beautiful cherry wood. These cherry slabs had a bunch of splits and cuts and I don't even know what to call it. it. It just looked like it was flaking out and I was really nervous that there would be a bunch of spots where the epoxy did not get into. So um, you're gonna see in just a second, I am just hacking away at these pieces to clean them up. But again, I'm measuring them out uh, for the layout of the table. And then I finish up the cross cutting. Now I'm gonna go down to the rip cutting here. Uh, again with the track saw, I've got like 16 different tracks um, that I use. And while they happen to be expensive, it is probably the best tool that I have in the shop for this job. It is actually, I don't think I could do it without this tool. Uh, so it is 100% worth the investment. I had to get up on top of the slabs to get that correct. Take a look at this. This is like the one air tool that I actually have in my studio. Uh, I bought it from Harbor Freight and it is amazing. Reason being is because Makita sells one and it's just too expensive. It's electric. I don't use it very much. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of air to process it. But um, here I am cleaning up some of this bark. Do you see how I'm like hacking away and trying to chip it up? Uh, there was some damage in the tree. Not exactly sure how that damage happened as the tree was growing. And sometimes people are like, hey, do you work out? And I'm like, no, I work. Don't you all just work as well? This is, I work all the time and never stop working it. We're about to mix up a whole bunch of Eco Epoxy Flowcast. This stuff is absolutely amazing, except for when there's a leak in the form, which is happening right now on the table behind me. But you know what? We're working through it. In this table, I had no leaks, and it turned out to be a wonderful, beautiful build. It's a two-part epoxy. You do, mix it with a two-to-one ratio. It works really, really, really great. I've never had this product fail in all the tables that I've done. Speaking of two-part, this is a two-part mix of Eco Epoxy's mica pigment. It is, again, the best micro mica pigment that I can find. Uh, it works extremely well. It suspends in the epoxy extraordinarily well um, and gives absolutely astounding colors. I did kind of a two-tone finish to get a nice turquoise on it. And then you're also going to see a secondary pour. You know, here's the main pour on the one side. And then on the other side of the table, this is a totally separate t color. Do you see that divider in there that I pull out later? Oh, and here I am taking the TOT sled down from the ceiling. I've got a hoist in the ceiling. I've got these clips that I put on the side. If you have not checked out TOT sled, uh, they do amazing work in producing their sled. It works seamlessly here. You can notice one hand operation, not a whole lot of dust. Actually, there is a lot of chipping and dust that ends up on the table and underneath the table, just like you see there. But with the vacuum hooked up on it, uh, the small particulate dust isn't in the air and consequently is not in my lungs. And if you notice, New Rockstars is on in the background. I'm a big fan of those folks um, with their commentary on Marvel and Star Wars lore to boot. I finished up planing down the table. Now it is time to shape it one more time with the Festool track saw. Love again use, using this tool. I cannot recommend it enough. Getting the edges nice and square before I take the jigsaw in just a few moments and I start making the edge of this table look like concrete. That was a risky process and I was extremely nervous at contouring the edges here. You see me take off the bottom portion of this jigsaw. That is so I can get a nice clean coping cut on the edges and really do what I need to do to make this look like concrete. This was super nerve wracking. Again, I did not know how this was gonna turn out. 
customer requested it, and I was like, why not? Might as well. Um, and you'll see the final product at the end of the video, and I think you're going to be very, very pleased and surprised with how well it turned out. Took a little bit of effort in sanding that you'll see in just a moment as well, um, but I was super pleased with the end result. I wanted to make sure uh, not to knock down all this contour, but it had to be a nice, easy edge as well. Most of the tables I make actually have a hand-sculpted edge with the sander. Why do I do it that way? Because I just think it looks cooler. So that's kind of the way, reason why I do it. Sanding always takes a long, long time, but I'm not going to bore you with that process here. Now we're going to start on the hourglass regal base for this table. This is a base that where the, if you look at the arcs on the side, it actually matches my logo, the bottom of the R in my logos. So again, the design means a lot to me and you're going to see how I go about cutting things, uh, rough cut them to length and then ripping them on the, the saw stop table saw. Of course, there is more cross cutting, more rip cutting that happens than you see on this video, but wow, um, this base turns out really, really great. Again, continuing to rip the uh, rough cut pieces to size so that I can glue them up. But before I do that, I also need to make sure that they are surface plane to the perfect thickness for the table base. Um, that's what I'm doing here, running them through the planer. This usually takes a long, long time as well. Kind of, sometimes it takes as long as sanding to make sure that the boards are perfect and beautiful and ready for glue. Now this Jet 15 inch straight blade planer, it does the job. Uh, there is some little bits on it that I wish were would work better. I wish it had the helical head, and I wish it would take the boards in a little bit easier. You see me giving it a little bit of a hip action here to get it into the planer. Sometimes the rollers just don't work. I've tried to set it like five times. I cannot get it perfect. I even pulled it in under warranty, and it didn't work out for me. Anyway, so I'm gluing up the, the base supports here. These things will eventually be cut into arcs. Uh, it takes a day. I leave them in the clamps for a full on day, even though I could probably pull them after two hours with this Type Bond 3 glue. Uh, I, I just like letting them sit and make sure it's a beautiful, perfect bond. Some more uh, gluing up here for the base. Uh, a lot of this base comes from this glue up, right? Instead of getting the width of the arcs. And I glue them up because it makes the table build a little bit more economical for me. Uh, and also if I glue them up really, really nice and tight, it ends up making the base a little bit stronger as well. Because if you're a woodworker, you know that the bond that the wood makes with the glue is stronger than the regular grain lines of the wood itself, if you do it correctly. And so that's kind of what I was going for. Um, any table base that I make with curves or arcs that require some of this glue up, this lamination there, it takes a ton of clamps. Then I use this CU Tech, um, CU Tech Jointer. You actually, if you go back, you can see my old business logo, repurposed by Rob, kind of changed that to uh, Robert Russell Designs a couple of years ago. But uh, yeah, this one has a heel head and it does a great job. Throwing it back on the jet planer to uh, surface them and make sure they're perfectly square. Got to hit them on the joiner first to make sure there's one edge that is perfectly 90 degrees and then we can come back on that planer. Got some more gluing here. Um, this will end up being for the arcs as well. Just different portions of the table. Do you see the two uh, boards that are glued together and then I'm kind of gluing up the flat panels here and that's what ends up being the arcs. I ended up labeling the pieces of wood so that I could make sure the grains um, and those seams don't line up with each other that they kind of overlap to, whereby making the table just that much stronger. Again, whole bunch more clamps, 
Got to put them away, take them off the racks, put them away, take them off the racks, put them away. You can see in the bottom left, you got a whole bunch more as well. And that's the way that I store the clamps, kind of a nifty little design that I saw. I saw it on Instagram or, or somewhere randomly, and I got pretty excited that I needed to add that to my shop. Tracing the templates. Um, a lot of people do template routing. Um, I'm not a big fan. I kind of like using the uh, sander to shape the final shape, the table. It's just the way that I do it. Um, I enjoy working with it by hand. But before I even do that, I've got to cut it on the bandsaw. Nice contours. This jet bandsaw does a great job. I've got the riser block in it. I'd recommend doing that if you, uh, if you have any type of bandsaw. Um, that has kind of a short throw to it like this one had. I'm going to take it here on the jet sander, belt disc sander combination. I'm going to roll it um, on the belt. I don't have the guard on the bottom. It's kind of like at that end drum, it's kind of this guard that helps collect dust. Uh, I pull it off so that I actually actually can get this nice perfect angle there um, got to lean over and take a look at what i'm doing more tracing i take the ends of those legs and i trace it on the horizontal portion of the base that i'm making to kind of continue that contour that arc um, that the legs have more, a little bit more bandsaw work got to be careful with the fingers always adjust the guard um, directly above the workpiece like I have here. Gonna glue it up again, um, but no, this time with the glue up, I'm gonna use the uh, Festool Domino loose tenon system here. And that allows me to get them perfectly lined up, perfectly organized, uh, and a real nice, perfectly strong bond. Got a horizontal piece in the middle just to add some interest, measuring and laying out. Um, where I'm cutting these dominoes works out great. You know, in the final glue up of the base, I'm always nervous to make sure I got those that lined up perfectly. It looks like I do. Um, tapping those dominoes in. Uh, some people like to use a little paint brush, a little glue brush to fill in the gaps with the dominoes. I think that's where, where you cut them. I think that's a little overkill. I just kind of dropped some glue in there. But anyways, we're clamping up one more time here. We've got a little bit of squeeze out, but whatever. It's got a nice, nice sanding here that we're going to do in just a second. It's all glued up. Time to sand these edges. This is a good workout for my... Um, you know, a lot of people do ask whether I work out, people that I know, and I reply, I just work. Sometimes the bases are heavy, sometimes the tabletops are heavy. And that Festool RO150, when that is in grinder mode, that thing is crazy tough to deal with um, and to manage. Uh, but one little thing, take a look at that little attachment I had on my reciprocating saw. It allows me to get in the uh, grooves without much headache. Now these things are amazing, the Festool knockdown connectors. It is how um, I'm able to ship the tables a little bit more economically. My carriers definitely like it when the bases break down flat and they are able to um, store more stuff in their van as they take it across the country for me. But anyway, so I'm using these knockdown connectors. Uh, takes a little bit of time to get used to the setup and the layout that you're gonna have to use with the Festool Domino but it is well worth it and they make such a tight, strong joint um, that there's, I really don't, don't worry about it breaking or coming loose any time um, in, the, in the life cycle of this table, but it allows the customers to break down their table as well. Now I'm putting some of the fittings in here, gotta kinda put that post in as well. Always put a Festool Domino to help alignment when um, you go ahead and put the, the the other board together, there it is, connected. We're gonna clean it up with mineral spirits here and then in just a second, you're gonna see me mixing up Rustic Lumber Company furniture oil. It's great stuff. 
Um, it does the trick to finish the table, but I get a special treat on this one. I'm adding some Ecopoxy pigments on it. The pigments I'm adding to it give me a nice deep color to uh, the table, and I'm really excited to have kind of thought through this process and tested it here. Um, it gives me the chance to make pretty much any color out of this wax and gives a nice deep, deep color to it, uh, which partly I was pretty nervous about getting. And this is one of the reasons why I was nervous about it. I was nervous about it because of the epoxy. I was nervous that it was going to make the epoxy just too dark and not shine through and not be brilliant like it should um, with the metallic pigments. But I was presently surprised. I was um, very excited to have tried this application to it. It's certainly something I'm going to do again uh, where I take the regular furniture oil and then I go ahead and dye it based off the customer's wishes. Uh, getting the flood method here, kind of getting in all those pores um, and then just kind of scraping it through and then wiping it off with uh, a rag. And this table is in the books. Very excited to have it finished. Now I've got my picture area here in my studio. Got that nice background board to it um, but this is a little bit of how i set it up by myself um, i'm a one person show for the most part besides nathan that you saw earlier in the video and um, i really do enjoy working by myself and just having one guy one person uh, to help me out but uh, sometimes when i'm setting up tables it's a little difficult now here i am unlocking the casters on this work table slash cart um, I call them carts, I call them work tables. That's because they double as both because I have those casters on it. Again, here it is in all of its beauty. Uh, the base is near and dear to my heart because it's related towards the logo that I have for my company. But look at these chipped edges. Wow, what a striking finish to the table. I'm very surprised and very pleased with the results. Make sure you enable notifications and subscribe to get more content just like this. Thanks for being part of uh, what makes it successful. Pew!